In this episode of Ytech, we are going to teach you how to build a PC. So, just a little insight. I actually planned this video for quite some time because every tech channel needs a how to build a PC video. But, since Razer wanted to send me their new Tomahawk ATX case, I was like, you know what, alright, just send it to me and maybe I can also build in it and take you guys along for the ride with the how to build a PC video. And so, here we are. Okay, so we've unboxed the Razer Tomahawk and this is how it looks like. It looks something like the NZXT H510 but I think it's a much better quality version of it because of the way it's built and all that, sounds, and all that kind of stuff. But that is not what you're going to concentrate on for now. So with a Razer case, you definitely need a Razer motherboard for some reason. Actually no, I asked them for the case and they're like, hey, you want to build stuff in our new motherboards? And they actually sent in the ASRock Tai Chi B550 Razer Edition. So we've unboxed this. So with motherboards, usually when you unbox them, they will come with the motherboard itself, obviously. And also the accessories box. So you usually have all these things that you can actually use to install stuff on your motherboards, but we'll get into that soon. Half the time, I actually don't use a lot of these things here because you get all your wires and stuff from the case and also from all your other peripherals. So let's just put this away first. So what we are going to use today is the Ryzen 5800X. This motherboard is specifically built after the Ryzen 5000 series launch, so it is Ryzen 5000 ready. But if you're using old motherboards, you gotta just make sure that your motherboard is updated. So you gotta update the BIOS and make sure that the BIOS actually supports the CPU that you are currently putting into your computer. It's actually pretty simple, you just unlock this. And for the CPU, just make sure that this, if you can, I don't know if you can see, there's this little uh, arrow over here. What you want to do is that you got to fit the arrow. There's this little arrow here. Most, most motherboards will have the arrow indicator where you can actually fit this little arrow here. So make sure that is aligned. So if it's aligned, it will just pretty much just drop in. And then it definitely can't move once it's in. And once you put that in, you can just lock it. And your CPU is installed. So after installing your CPU, the next thing you want to do is install your RAM. So things that you can install your, on your motherboard first, you might want to do that so it doesn't get a little bit cumbersome when you start moving things into your case. So what you want to do with your first stick of RAM is to install it at the first port that is furthermost away from the CPU. So this one, so you just slot it in and gently push it down till you hear, hear a click. There you go. Now if you have two sticks of RAM, the second the second stick of RAM should go into the second slot that is nearest to the CPU. Same thing as the first stick, you just gotta gently push it in and lock it in place. If you're asking why, it is basically something to do with the motherboard RAM channel thingy, it's something pretty slightly advanced, but this is the configuration that will give you the most performance out of your RAM sticks. And if you put it side by side, let's say if you put you put a RAM stick here and a RAM stick here, the motherboard and the way computers are designed, it is not going to utilize the speed of the RAM as much as possible. So this uh, this is the, actually the optimal one. So the next thing you want to do is to install your M.2 SSD if you have one. So you just need to unscrew this portion. So once you unscrew it, obviously this thing, this little plate will come out. And when you insert your M.2 SSD, make sure you are inserting it at an angle. Usually there is a little knob here, not knob, it's a little compartment for you to just put it in. So when you press put it in, it should just slide in like that. And you can see that your, the M.2 is actually floating. What you want to do right now, you just press it down. And usually there will be a screw here, but because this little plate actually has an inbuilt screw as well, so you can actually just use that as a as to, just to push it down basically. And usually for plates like this, they will have a little thermal pad that will sit on your SSD. So you might want to just take out the little foam that's guarding it and then put it back into place. So press this down and then just place it back. 
and then just screw it back down. So after installing your M.2 and all of this stuff, you might actually want to try and install your cooler onto your CPU after this. But installing your cooler is really technically quite subjective on when you should be doing it. Because let's say you have something like an air cooler, you can actually just install it right now, just put your thermal paste and then just install and follow the instructions on your manual most of the time and then you're good to go. You can actually just put it in your PC after that. But let's say if you're using something like an AIO or whatsoever, it is actually quite cumbersome to actually move around the AIO together with the motherboard. So I think I'll do that later and I'll show you later on on how to like put your thermal paste and all that kind of stuff. So right now, let's move on to the PC and let's install the motherboard in it. So usually for your PC case, you might want to try and disassemble everything to make sure that there is no restrictions for you and stuff like that. So for this Razer case, obviously, this is actually really, really nifty. But we are going to talk about how to build a PC today and not really admire about uh, admire this case, which is actually pretty good. Okay, plug this side out. Put it somewhere safe. If it's tempered glass, obviously try your best not to break the glass before anything happens. So move this and then at the back as well. Just remove everything that you can. And then usually your case will come with like an accessories box and stuff. So just make sure that you pull this out as well from your... All right, cool. So you just pull this out from your case and just put it in a safe place. And just make sure it's as bare as possible. So for this razor case, this is actually one of the very good nifty features that the case has. This is where you put all your like SSDs and your hard drives and stuff. So you just slot it in. Most cases will come with a drive bay like this. So you just take pull all of that aside. And then uh, I think for this, yeah, for a razor, I just need to yank this out. Try and keep it as bare as possible so that you are not being obstructed by anything. Most cases won't come with panels like this. Most cases will just become very, very bare bones at the back. But if you have anything that is pretty much hiding your cables and stuff like that, this is actually a good time to take it all out. Just to make sure you have a lot more space to play with. And then, this is really up to you as well again. On how you want to install your motherboard, you can actually just either stand up and put your motherboard like this and then screw it in or you can lay the PC down like what I'm going to do right now. Usually, I'm more comfortable doing it this way but it's really again up to you. There's no one right way to build a PC is what I'm trying to say. Okay, I'm actually going to install it upright because the camera can't see it when I put it down. So, <laughs> I guess I have to do it this way. And speaking of taking all the stuff off on your case as well. The Razer one comes with this fan as well, but this is going to slightly interfere with the motherboard installation. So I'm just going to take this out first. But yeah, building a PC is not really very straightforward sometimes because there are a lot of things that you can encounter along the way, like things like this, like getting things out of the way, making sure things are actually not stopping you from installing your PC smoothly. Okay, this is a razor fan. No brand, nothing, but it looks sleek, but eh, we're not gonna use this. Okay, so as I was saying, we just gotta take the motherboard out of the box that, it's, that it came from. And what you wanna do is, there are a few holes here on the back of your PC. You might just wanna line up all of this with those holes. So, just slowly just place them in and make sure it lines up. Usually for those screws to screw your motherboard onto the case, it usually comes with the case, not the motherboard itself because who knows what these cases use for their screws and all that stuff. So usually you can find all of these little screws in the accessories box for the case itself. So all the screws are here. So you just want to slowly just screw all of them in. Usually what I will do is that I will screw the one in the middle first just to keep the motherboard in place. At least now my motherboard wouldn't like topple over if I accidentally hit it or something like that. And also one thing to note, when you are building your PC, always have a magnetic screwdriver because you don't know where your screws will go half the time. So it's actually very, very, very helpful to have a screwdriver that is actually magnetic that will attract your screws and not let your screws like fall everywhere. So I think this is the point where we will install our CPU cooler. So what you want to do for the thermal base is just to put a pea-sized 
portion of thermal paste onto the CPU itself. You can spread it out if you want to, but it's really up to you. If you accidentally put too much, that is fine as well. The only, technically, the only bad thing will be not having enough thermal paste because then you are not sure whether your CPU is in contact with the cooler or not. Okay, so now we are going to install the CPU cooler onto our CPU. Uh, one thing you got to note is that some CPU coolers may require you to remove the brackets for the AMD systems. Intel systems usually do not have that. But again, it really depends on the cooler. Our current cooler doesn't require that to be removed, so we're just going to install it in. Okay, so when you're installing the CPU cooler as well, you just want to make sure that your screws are tightened as much as possible, but not over tightened. So you just want to try and balance the, the way it's being screwed down and not over tighten. So once you feel like there's a lot of resistance, please do not continue jerking it down. Yes, so that, this is fine. It's not turning anymore. So this is fine. No more, no more extra force. Okay, so now we've installed the CPU cooler. So I obviously am using the AIO. So what you want to do with the AIO, some people would like to install it on top. I do not have any space on the top here because I think there's only space for two fans. So my AIO is a 360 AIO, which takes up three slots, three fan slots. So basically I have to put it right at the front. So I've installed that here already just to save time. And now I'm going to install the fans. So one thing with fans, you've got to note, with fans, there is this little cross at one part of the fan and the other, fan is, the other side of the fan is obviously normal. So how air flows through fans is basically going through the part that is without the cross out to the part with the cross. So basically air flows this way. So like you can see here, I have place the non-cross parts in front so that the air can flow inwards. So when I install this fan, I'm going to put it this way so that it actually exhausts all the hot air out and stuff like that. So I'm going to install three fans and I'll get to it. Okay, while I'm installing the back fans, one thing I forgot to mention is this IO shield. Usually for motherboards, cheaper motherboards, they will not have an, a pre-installed I.O. shield on the motherboard. So you can actually find whether your motherboard actually has this on the side. And usually what people will do is that they will just plunk this in first before installing the motherboard. So that is one thing that you got to take note if you are looking, if you have like a little panel in your motherboard box and you don't know what that is, it's usually this I.O. shield. Okay, so one thing also I forgot to note, it really depends on your case once again. You see the CPU ports up there, wait, let me put this fan down. The CPU ports up here. If I were to install my fan currently right now, it's just going to block my way to installing the wires for it. So what I'm going to do is to install the wires to the CPU ports here first before I install the fans. Okay, so now we've installed the fans already. And then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to plug in all the different power inputs into the motherboard. So this is a 24 pin right at the side of the motherboard here. Make sure it's the correct side most of the time. Uh, a lot of um, power supply units, when they actually give you the wires, they will actually indicate which part of the wire goes into your motherboard and which part of the wire goes into your uh, power supply. But just in case, Always double check your wires before you shove them into your motherboard or your power supply so that you don't like shoving the wrong things into the different wrong ports. There we go, that looks that looks way nicer actually. Actually, this little thing, I think it's supposed to hide cables and stuff, but with the wires coming out this way, it actually looks really nice. So yeah, so we just install this and I've already installed the CPU ports, the CPU power previously before I installed the fans. And then, right now, the next thing you've got to do is basically plug in all the IOs for the case into your motherboard as well. Okay, so first things first, if your case has USB 3.0, usually it will come with a cable like this. So you just got to find that little port. I think it's over here. Yeah, it's the one over here. Make sure you just slowly put it in. The groove is right smack in the middle and then just 
push it in and that's it, it's locked in place. And then the same thing goes for the USB-C as well. So if you have USB-C on your case, so the USB-C input is over here. And then there's the next step. If your case has a front panel audio, you might want to look for the front panel audio interface connector. It's usually at the bottom of the motherboard, but most some motherboards might not have it there. So let me just double check here. So it is right here. And then the last piece of the puzzle usually for the case is the power or the reset button. These wires will basically also connect to the motherboard to tell your motherboard to boot up whenever you press the button. So you kind of find where these ports are. If you don't know where all these ports are, make sure you look at your motherboard's manual because most of the time they will tell you where to put all of these little plugs in. And some cases usually have like LEDs right in front to indicate whether there is activity going on in the computer and most of the time those little connectors to those LEDs are also at the same place where you put in the power and the reset switch. So the next thing we're going to do is install our hard drives as well. If you have more than one hard drive, more than the SSD that is inside here, the M.2 by the way, if you have a normal 2.5 SSD or a normal 3.5 HDD, you might want to actually just install it right now and also connect these to the motherboard as well. So there's this portion where it actually has the SATA connectors where it connects to the hard drives. So for your hard drives and all of that, um, usually there's this little portion here that's small and then there's big. This is usually for power. This is usually for the connection to the motherboard. So what you want to do is just make sure there's that little groove. I don't know if the camera can see. Cannot see. Okay, there's a groove here together with the groove on the cable. Just make sure you align that groove and you just click in and that's it. Even it's even the same even for hard disk drives. So there's the same connector, the same groove. Just plug it in and there you go. And wherever you install it, make sure you actually plug it into your motherboard afterwards. So you can see that thing coming out there. And you can just click it into place and there we go. And that's how you install your hard drives onto your motherboard. So now the next thing we're going to talk about is the fans and the RGB of the whole entire setup. So for fans, usually there are ports for fans onto the motherboard as well. I have six fans right now. I think I should have six fan ports. But what if I do not have six fan ports for my six fans? What you can do is that you can use a fan splitter. You can combine three fans into one single port and stuff like that. But you just got to make sure that you are not overloading the, the fan port on the motherboard. Usually, it is able to take up to three fans. When it comes to like, if you want to count current and all that kind of stuff, one fan port can take about one amp. Usually, a fan will take up 0.3 amps. Some fans may vary, so please check with your fan vendor or where you bought the fans from to check how much current the fan will pull from the motherboard. And the next thing we're going to talk about is RGB. RGB, in a sense, is quite complicated. It's just light, it's for sure. It doesn't do anything for your PC, but it's one of the most complicated things in your setup because it comes in two types. It comes in a 3-pin type and it comes in a 4-pin type. The 4-pin type is a 12-volt. The 3-pin type is a 5-volt. So. To put it very simply, if you plug the 12 volt into a 3 pin, which is the 5 volt, you will fry your LEDs and vice versa. Some fans come with proprietary connectors. So if you have stuff like from Corsair or probably stuff from NZXT, you will never see this 3 pin that you can plug into the motherboard. So you got to make sure you are actually buying fans that can fit into your motherboard and I don't know if you can see this, this is like a 3-pin that you can shove in into your motherboard, but I'll talk about this some other time. Speaking of which, our next episode of Ytech will be talking solely on RGB, so I will clarify all of that then. But for now, let's not worry about it because it's going to take too much time to complete this whole entire PC build if I start talking about RGB itself. Okay, so after installing all the RGB and all the wires and stuff, the next thing we're going to do is install our GPU. So what you want to do with the GPU is just to put it in. So make sure it's lined up with the PCIe bracket over there. And all you got to do is just slot it in until you hear a click and that's it. 
usually it should support itself and that's it and what you want to do when you took out the screws for to release all these brackets make sure you take the screws again and screw it back in now that the GPU is installed what you want to do is take your GPU power and plug it in first and while we're at it don't know if the camera can capture it again but you see there's this PCIe thing here that indicates that you should be plugging is plugging this into the GPU and then on the other end of the wire there's PSU which means this is supposed to be plugged in your power supply so some cables actually give you that indication not too sure if all of them do that but that's just a very nice thing to have so just check your wires before you install them in now after all of that installed now comes the ugliest part of PC building <laughs> the cable management and hooking everything up to your power supply so what we're gonna do next is to install the power supply unit and depending on where your how you want your Con your configuration to be usually some cases like this have a dust filter at the bottom so you can actually place your so the power supply has a fan as well so depending on where you want the power supply to intake the, the air from you can actually just either put it this way or this way so since this has, has a filter at the bottom I am going to put the fan facing below motherboard um, cables usually have 24 pins and it's always separated into like this so obviously this if it comes like this plug this into your power supply and not to your motherboard and this is for modular power supplies by the way some power supplies actually are not modular so they actually the power supply actually comes with a cable like that so you can just put your power supply aside while plugging everything in so there's also indication that where you should be plugging your CPU power in so you can actually plug that in here all right and then for your GPU as well the power supply connectors just plug it in as well and also like I said earlier remember when I was talking about your hard drives as well you might want to actually just plug it into the hard drive as well plug the SATA into it and also plug that into your power supply so I think that's all of it. I don't think I missed anything out. So, all right, so great. So now we have everything plugged into the power supply. So you just make sure you have enough space to put your power supply in. You just need to screw your power supply into the case as well. So over here. And once the power supply is in place right now, the last thing you gotta do is cable manage. Cable managing basically means that you you can do it, you can not do it, but I personally prefer to do it because then it makes things look nicer at the back. I mean, technically, I don't need to. Since Razer actually came up with this little nifty thing at the back to like block all the cables. And voila, all cable managed. <laughs> As if. Actually, rule of thumb. Don't put everything back together until you like do a first boot. So once you start finishing the back portion of your PC, all the cable management and stuff, just try and turn it on first and see whether your PC boots up. Don't wait until like the end of this. I'm confident that this will boot up. So let's see. So the moment of truth, whether the PC will turn on, I set up the monitor and stuff like that just in case to see if there's anything wrong with it I can troubleshoot let's turn on let me just check if the oh it's already lighting up means it's there's power going through here we go all right so one RAM stick is not in cool so now we fixed that issue so I'm just going to try and get the thing to boot to BIOS and see. We have the Ryzen 5800, it registers. And then we have our two DDR sticks, correct? So everything registers. And we have both our NVMe and our SSD registered as well. So yes, everything works. 
So here you go. This is the Razer Tomahawk with all the stuff inside of it. I mean, when the door is open, it doesn't look that great because it just looks normal. But the motherboard lights up like nobody's business. Well done. Well done, Razer. I think once we install Chroma and stuff, uh, I'm pretty sure you can control everything. So there you have it, how to build a PC. I hope you guys have learned something from it and I definitely learned a couple of things with this case and stuff like that as well. So our next episode of YTech, we'll be talking about the RGB in your system and how to make it look nice, what kinds of RGB are there and also different kinds of softwares that you can pretty much use for your RGB. There are too many, spoiler alert. So, do tune in for the next episode if you are very interested in that, those kind of stuff. It does absolutely nothing for your computer except making it look nice and probably introduce some bloatware into your PC. But till next time, stay safe and I'll see you in the next video. Yeah. <laughs>